Hello and welcome to the Physics of Fluid Mechanics course. So fluids itself can be a pretty difficult subject, but it is very important in a lot of different fields of engineering and science and obviously physics. And so I wanted to, in this video, go over just a few topics and the course itself. And this course really is just a complete playlist of all the major topics of fluids that you'll encounter in your future studies. And in this video, I wanna talk about who this course is for, uh, any prerequisites you may need to have or that you have questions on, what this course is gonna cover. So I'm gonna talk about all the different topics I teach in this course. Okay, so a few notes before we actually begin. Uh, firstly, you may have noticed that on my channel there is another playlist called Fluid Mechanics. Now this course for this particular playlist is called the Physics of Fluid Mechanics, whereas the other course is just called Fluid Mechanics. Now I wanna state very uh, explicitly that this fluid mechanics course is a calculus based fluids course where this physics of fluid mechanics course this course that you're watching right now is a non calculus based fluid mechanics course and in essence this course right here the one that you are watching is really kind of like a high level introduction to some of the advanced topics that we talk about in the fluid mechanics course so again this is the physics of fluid mechanics course it's going to be a high level overview of some of the more advanced topics that you might encounter in fluid mechanics and if you are interested in checking out that fluid mechanics course that was actually the first course i ever made I will have that as a link down in the description below. So please check that out if you are interested in studying fluid mechanics in a little bit more depth, or if you're taking a more calculus-based fluid mechanics course at your college or university. Okay, secondly, all of my notes. So all of the notes that I use for this course, so notes, those notes can be found also in the description down below. So I'll have a link to the PDF document for all the notes that I use in this entire course. So they are yours to use and reference and refer to. Uh, so please download them, please check them out. Uh, it's a great aid uh, for this entire course and some of the topics that I'm going to be covering. Okay, so next, let's talk about who this course is for. Okay, so like I previously mentioned, this is the physics of fluid mechanics course, whereas this course right here is a calculus-based fluid mechanics class. So this course in particular, this course is really intended for somebody who hasn't ever studied fluid mechanics before, but they might be taking either an advanced fluid mechanics course in their school career, or you might be just studying general physics as a major, or somebody who just needs to get a physics course out of their way as a general education requirement or whatever else. Now, this course itself is not gonna get into the super nitty gritty topics of fluid mechanics, but instead is gonna introduce you to a lot of the different topics that you usually encounter in a more advanced course. And I'll be going over exactly the topics that I'm gonna cover in this course in just a few moments. But before we get to that, let's talk about prerequisites. So as far as prerequisites go, I think if you're late into high school or early into college, I think you'll have enough education by then to fully grasp all the material and concepts in this course. But I think having, number one, a basic understanding of forces and vectors is going to be really, really helpful. So if you haven't taken like an introduction to physics course where you don't really know what a force is or a vector is, I would highly recommend you go and review that material before taking this course. But if you do know what a force is, as well as vectors, what a vector is and how you can break different vectors up into components, I think that will be very, very helpful. Secondly, I think a good understanding of, let's say, high school mathematics is probably a basic minimum requirement. So if you've taken something like algebra and geometry and you're pretty solid with those topics, I think you'll be totally fine in this course. Again, this is not a calculus-based fluid mechanics course, even though some concepts might refer to things in calculus, but for those things, I'll try to make it as easy and simple as possible so you don't have to go and take a calculus-based class before you watch this course. And finally, I think having a good understanding of how to convert units is extremely important. So for an example, if you had a arbitrary length like four meters, how you can convert that into feet 
or inches or centimeters or millimeters. I think having those skills is really, really important. And we'll be doing a lot of unit conversion throughout this course, but if you already know how to convert units and convert them well, then I think you are more than ready for this course. Okay, so let's talk about the course overview. Let's go over all the topics that I'm going to cover in this course. And so for that, I will scroll down a tiny bit. Okay, so the very first topic I'm going to start off with is obviously an introduction to fluids. So in this kind of section of the course, we're gonna talk about fluid definitions. We'll talk about molecular bonds and kind of how particles behave and interact with one another and how we can really classify fluids and as well as how they differ from solids. And then we'll get into topics of volume and density. Those are really, really important topics in fluids. We need to be able to calculate how much volume a certain uh, liquid or fluid or gas occupies, as well as what its density is. And that's going to take us into the topic of mass density. So mass density is really how much mass there is of a fluid for a particular volume. And mass density is a really important property in fluids, and we can use it to actually classify fluids and determine what a specific fluid is. So after we get done with this, we're going to start off with pressure, the topic of pressure. So as you might know, pressure is all around us, right? When we go and sit in our car and we drive up a mountain, you might have your ears pop, you might feel a little bit more lightheaded, and that's because the pressure at a certain elevation is changing. So we're gonna talk about what pressure is and how fluids themselves cause pressure forces. And then we'll get into how to calculate those fluid pressures. We'll also talk about atmospheric pressure, the natural pressure here on Earth, specifically at sea level and how that might affect different pressures for different objects in, you know, submerged in different types of fluids. And then after that, we'll talk about hydrostatic pressure. And I've written down the hydrostatic pressure equation right here. We are going to talk about this in the course. We'll derive it and we'll do some examples on how to use it. So this pressure equation, this hydrostatic pressure equation, uh, really just allows us to calculate the pressure uh, in a fluid at a certain depth D. So think about the ocean, right? If you were at the top of the ocean, you might be feeling fine, but if somebody submerged you, you know, 10,000 meters down into the ocean, uh, number one, that would be very scary. But number two, your pressure, all the fluid that's above you is gonna exert this pressure onto your body. So you're gonna feel very, very tight and compressed. And so this equation right here really tells us how we can calculate uh, hydrostatic pressure, AKA fluid that is not moving. So it's just static fluid and we can calculate the pressure anywhere inside of that body of liquid. And then after that, we'll get into manometers and barometers, which are essentially devices used to calculate pressure in different ways. And then finally, we'll talk about the hydraulic lift and the hydraulic lift theory. And that is basically how we can use liquids to do work. So if you've ever got, gone to a car auto shop where you need to get your car fixed, they usually put your car on top of this lift, which allows them to raise the car up a certain distance so that they can get under it and do you know, whatever they need to do. And those systems really just use fluids to do work in meaningful ways. So we'll talk about all of that in this section. After pressure, we will go into buoyancy. So we'll talk about what buoyancy is and how it really relates to objects that float or sink within bodies of liquids or fluids. We'll talk about how to calculate buoyancy and where buoyant force truly comes from and really try to understand how we can use fluid properties to calculate these enormous forces acting on objects such as ships to keep them above the water and not sink. So after buoyancy, we'll get into kind of the one of the most important subjects in fluids, and that is fluid dynamics. So in this section, we're gonna talk about the ideal fluid model. And the ideal fluid model is just a model that we use to describe a fluid that is moving. And we introduce some assumptions to basically make calculating fluid dynamic problems a little bit more simpler. Fluid flow and fluid dynamics is a very, very complex top topic. So in this section on fluid dynamics, we're going to limit ourselves to this ideal fluid model where the fluid that is flowing is in a very particular state. 
And with that state, we'll talk about the continuity equation, we'll talk about streamlines, volumetric flow rate, and then we'll get into Bernoulli's equation. And this is the general form of Bernoulli's equation. Now again, don't worry, don't let this scare you. We're going to derive it, we're going to figure out where all these terms come from and how we can use this Bernoulli's equation to do some pretty important things. So again, in this section, we're really trying to understand how fluid flows in an ideal state before we get into more complicated uh, fluid dynamics problems. And Bernoulli's equation is very central and key to those later discussions. And then finally, after fluid dynamics, we are going to cover elasticity. Now, this section on elasticity is really going to revolve around solids and kind of how they interact when they're submerged in bodies of liquid or fluids. To understand how pressure compresses an object, a solid object, we need to learn about a few different things, such as Young's modulus, the bulk modulus, tensile stress, volume stress, and then our strain values. What this section is, is really determining how much an object can be compressed in volume due to a fluid pressure. So this pressure topic that we talked about up here is obviously going to exert pressure on an object if that object is, you know, 10,000 meters under the surface of the ocean. And as that object goes further and further down, it's going to be compressed due to the pressure that's being exerted on that object. So in this final section, we are really just going to uh, cover this topic on how pressure uh, relates to how much a uh, solid can compress when it's submerged in some type of body of liquid. Okay, that is it. I hope you enjoy this course. I hope you find it very, very helpful. Uh, a last few notes before I end this video. Uh, I do wanna say that the videos in this playlist, the videos in this course are numbered. Uh, so please take them in order. If you don't understand a certain topic or a particular video, feel free to watch it as many times as you can uh, to really absorb that material before moving on and not fully grasping you know, a, a particular topic. And of course, post in the comments if you have any questions. And then finally, no, I am so sorry. I cannot help you with your homework problems. I'm just one person making this course. I just don't have time to answer everybody's questions. But if you do post them in the comments, hopefully somebody else in the community can come by and help you out. Again, this is a collaborative learning experience. So I really hope this course helps. Um, and if you find it helpful, please give this a thumbs up. And I wish you the best of luck in your future studies of the physics of fluid mechanics. All right, see you in lecture number one.